My guest is Dr. Andrew Winterborn, Community Veterinary Outreach Kingston. I heard about this project and I thought I got to talk to you about this. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's fascinating. So tell us what that's all about. Yep. So good afternoon and thank you very much for the, uh, the invite and the opportunity to talk about My Community point. Veterinary Outreach. Um, no, so it, it's an opportunity to be able to set up a mobile veterinary clinic uh, within the Kingston region to be able to serve individuals that are, are unhoused or vulnerably housed from a uh, veterinary perspective, but also combine it with uh, human health services as well at the, the same time. So it's really an opportunity to be able to provide a, a One Health uh, outreach to, uh, to individuals that are unhoused. But we have socialized medicine, so why do we need to do this? Yeah, so un unfortunately, um, as I'm sure some people are aware, veterinary uh, expenses can be uh, quite a lot at times. And as a result, uh, through community veterinary outreach, we are able to offer free veterinary services to individuals that come to the clinic. Um, and that can range anything from vaccinations, microchipping animals, uh, treating common ailments that we might see in uh, an individual's pets. Maybe tr uh, flea treatment. And then again. flea treatments as well. So there could be flea and, and tick prevention as well. But then there's the human element, and that's what's throwing me a little yeah. bit. I mean, I mean we, we've, we've, got ve we've got socialized medicine, so why do we need this? Yeah, <laughs> and so what we've found, and, and Community Veterinary Outreach has been operating for over 20 years. Um, the founder, Dr. Michelle Lem, uh, founded it uh, 20 years ago in, in Ottawa. And what she identified at, at that point in time was that individuals are more likely to seek human health care services when they're taking care of their pets at the same time. Really? And so it's really looking at sort of a, an opportunistic approach, one health approach, where bring your pet in, get seen by a veterinarian, and now at the same time, those in, the individuals then have the opportunity to be able to access human health services, which they typically don't have access to. And so although, yes, we do have um, social medicine within Canada, individuals that are, are unhoused or vulnerably housed um, are underserved within, um, within the healthcare services. Well, I know, I've, I've heard that sometimes they don't have identification. They've, lo they've had it stolen or they've lost it. So you can't get a health card without identification. It just, and so it goes. Exactly. Yes, and so by having ready access on site, so um, we've been very fortunate to be able to partner with uh, KFLA Public Health, um, and they, were, they brought the uh, porch bus on site um, as part of their services, so individuals were then able to have point of care testing um, for sexually transmitted diseases, uh, they were offering immunization as our, our first clinic was held in January. So immunization for the flu as, as well as COVID vaccine. Um, we've been able to uh, obtain support through Ottawa Heart Research Institute um, and program for smoking cessation oh, as well. That's a good one. Um, and so through that program, they're using the Ottawa model of smoking cessation. Um, and Johnson & Johnson has, has donated um, nicotine replacement therapy, which we're then able to provide to the clients that, that come to the clinic. Um, and we're hoping with future clinics that we will be able to expand on the human health services that we're providing. I could think dental care comes to exactly. mind. Exactly, and that was sort of, I think one of the interesting approaches that we've been able to take is really listen to the community um, and find out what services they were interested um, in being able to access. And so one of the other co-directors, um, Myra Emery, is a social worker um, and was fortunate to have students from Queens on placement uh, this past summer. And they conducted sort of a needs assessment uh, within the population at the Integrated Care Hub so that we could really try and tailor our services to what their interests and needs were and, 
as you indicated, dental was actually one of the, uh, the, the services that they were requesting. And at our next clinic on April 26, working with KFLA, we have been able to secure uh, dental. That, oh, that, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that is so good. Now, could that treatment continue after that particular day? So I believe that is the hope, yes. I think the uh, KFLA on the, the first clinic um, where the dental unit is going to be present, I think they're not quite sure what the uptake is going to be. So I think they're going to do uptake on the, the first day. Um, and then from there, look to sort of do a further needs assessment in the hope to then be able to offer it long term. That is a wonderful idea. Wow. Yeah. That, that's, can you give me an example of when you might use, so you, they brought their pet in. Yes. And so you're, you're looking over the pet. How do you suggest to them that maybe there's something they could use as well. Can, <laughs> like how, do you, yeah. how do you get your way through that one? <laughs> no, and it really is, I think, you know, it's an opportunity to be able to interact with individuals on a human level. And I think okay. it, it really comes naturally while we're examining the pet that there's other volunteers that are on site as well at the same time and, you know, indicate whether it's a registration or while we're doing the, the pet physical exams that, oh, by the way, you know, once you're left, once you leave, we have X, Y, Z available for you. And, and then we'll have individuals and volunteers that can then guide our clients to be able to access the other services. Okay. And sort of what's interesting yeah. from the literature is you actually find from research um, that individuals that are um, unhoused, vulnerably housed, um, are interested in putting um, pet before self. It's sort of a, a term that, that Michelle Lem coined um, where they realize that their health and taking care of themselves will long-term benefit their pets. Oh, and wow. so yes, of course. They then see that, well, if I, you know, perhaps stop smoking, I might now have more funds available to then be able to provide for my animal. Um, you know, in, in the, the same research that Michelle conducted, um, if you're sort of looking at drug and alcohol use, individuals that had pets um, self-declared a decrease in consumption of, of alcohol and, and drugs when they did have pets to take care of. And so we see that, you know, there's this companionship that the pets provide that supports the individuals from a, a mental health perspective. Well, that was the other thing that, and, and I've had this, this discussion with more than one person, when they'll say, well, I see them with dogs, you know, panhandling and they've got dogs. They shouldn't have dogs if they, and after I calm down a little, <laughs> so give me your best answer. I'll tell you what I say, but you go ahead. You know better than, yes, please. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And I've received this question a <laughs> lot since, you have. <laughs> since being involved with community veterinary outreach. And I'd actually turn the question around onto them and say, is it right that those individuals don't have somewhere to live permanently? And so it really isn't a question around um, having pets. It really should be a focus on individuals that are unhoused and how are we supporting those individuals? Um, you know, they provide an immense amount of companionship and support wow. to individuals that are homeless. Um, you know, we know that um, there is an overrepresentation of mental health disease in, in the individuals that are within that population. And by having companionship from pets, it does provide some relief. And I think we all know if we've got pets at home, we've had a tough day, pets come and run towards us, it's unconditional love. Absolutely, they don't care what you look like, smell like, or anything exactly. else, they just think you're wonderful. Exactly. And the other thing is, when uh, from having a dog, when you walk your dog, you meet people because people talk to your dog. Exactly, and so there's actually research <laughs> out of the UK that's demonstrated that with, with individuals that are unhoused where um, if they are on the streets with a dog, there's a lot more social interaction mm -hmm. because the dog draws people into them. Exactly, exactly. Now, this has got to cost some money to, yes. to put this on. <laughs> and 
I know funds can be tight with any organization, yeah. but this is so valuable for the people who are the most vulner vulnerable yeah. out there. What can we do to help? Yeah, so I would encourage everyone to visit vetoutreach.org, our website, okay. and you're able to donate directly to the Kingston region uh, through the website. Um, there's a donate button that appears directly at the top. In addition, we're always looking for volunteers, and so if individuals are interested in volunteering as part of the Kingston region, there's also a volunteer button where they can sign up and hear about our future clinics. And if they know somebody who is vulnerable, yes. um, precariously housed and, and so on, yeah. um, they can tell them about this. And the next date for a, yeah. a, a, a clinic day is? Yeah, so our next clinic is going to be April 26th. Um, for that clinic, we are working uh, with caseworkers that are referring our clients to us. Um, but certainly, um, individuals can come to our clinics and we will, we will treat those animals time permitting. And where is it going to be held? Uh, so it's going to be held at 535 Montreal Street, okay. uh, which is a Providence Care Building. It's part of ACT. Um, and we will be uh, we'll be working out of that clinic on that site on that day. So it's a wonderful project. I'm so glad you came in to tell <laughs> me about it. Well, thank you very much for your time.